Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by Omaha Steaks, and we are doing another Dog Pack Discord show. Josh All, Justin Charles with you guys, and while we let the chat here on Discord fill up, just want to remind you guys, if you're watching this video on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. We are getting closer and closer and closer to 10K, and we can't wait to get there. We'd really love to do it before the season starts. So help us get there. Subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on audio, give us a five-star review. Helps out the show a ton. We are talking today. We had Browns football on the field yesterday for the first time in 2024. Well, no, I guess not technically for the first time this year because we did play in January. But for the 2024 season, the preseason has kicked off. The Browns played the Packers yesterday. And we are here to discuss it with everybody in our Dog Pack community. And again, if you are interested in joining the Dog Pack community and taking part in some of these discourse stages like we've been doing, we're going to do more throughout the season, hopefully, and just continue this, this process. Go to jointhedogs.com become an official dog pack member, join the Patreon page, help support the show. Number one, we really appreciate that you get to come into the, these discord dog pack shows like this. You get access to the private discord. We're doing a big dog pack meetup in November for one of the Browns games where everybody's getting together at a Browns backers bar. And we're going to have Browns alumni there. We're going to do some podcasting. There's so many perks and benefits to being in the dog pack. So just go ahead and give that a look if you're interested. And we are pushing we we only got a couple of weeks left for fantasy football. So you guys here in, in the discord, if you have, if you want to play fantasy and you have not registered yet, go put your name on the registration post. It's, at, it's pinned to the top of the Patreon page. And if you want to play fantasy football and you're not in Patreon yet, just go to that link, join the dogs.com, join the Patreon. And it's the very first post pinned to the top of the page. Just drop your name on the register uh, comment sheet there and we'll get you into one of our fantasy leagues. I think, Justin, we I think we've got four filled up completely, working on that fifth. And if we get enough people, we'll open a sixth league as well. So don't wait. If you want to get in, get in now. So who would like to jump up on stage first and talk about what we saw yesterday when the Browns took on the Packers? Anybody, anybody with their hand up, Mr. Jackson. Let me, uh, man, it has been a few weeks since we've done this. Okay, there we go. We'll get you up here. Andrew, what's up, buddy? So uh, I saw a lot of the coverage and stuff yesterday and everything about the, the game. I mean, I don't know if anyone's paid attention over the last five years, but that's pretty much a Kevin Stansky, uh preseason game. Just vanilla, vanilla, if vanilla was vanilla. So... <laughs> Are you guys worried about anything? Because I, after what I saw, like there's some things that I saw that were great. Like it, like the transition between quarterback to quarterback to quarterback, I thought was great. But like overall, like I thought it was pretty decent. Like for a, a preseason uh, first preseason game, I I really just don't buy all of the hype of the negativity. I guess is what I'm saying. No, I, I'll let I'll let Justin go in a sec. The only things, I guess there's yeah. really like two main things that I guess I would come away worried about and concerned about. And it has nothing to do with the play calling, has nothing to do with the offensive output or showing or anything like that. My number one concern right now is uh, offensive line depth because we've lost both yes. our backup centers now. And that we'll get to Luke Whipler in a second, but that sucks big time. And then the other thing on defense that I'm worried about, tackling seemed a little suspect yesterday i know it's the backups but at the same time that's the kind i mean those are the kind of football fundamentals that go from you know the the top of the depth chart to the bottom throughout practice you know what are these guys being excuse me taught and everything you know during training camp and it just seemed like tackling was a little bit at times not quite there but justin what do you think buddy my uh this is my takeaway with all preseason games doesn't matter what team it is it (laughs) <laughs> and there, what you see is probably not what you're going to get. I, I came into yesterday. I wanted to see some of the depth pieces. I wanted to see the second, the third string guys. And that's pretty much what we got. And I came away, I guess, lacking a little bit. Like I felt like we kind of underperformed. But I talked to Josh about it. I don't think that we came in there trying to show them anything, anybody, anything. 
like you said, very, very vanilla. I think if you can take good things away from it, you know, I thought Cade York looked solid, you know, from what I saw. I thought DTR looked great. But I agree. I'm with Josh. If there's the big takeaway from this game, it's offensive line depth. And now you're looking at a situation where Posick, who has injury history now, you know, if he goes down right now, we don't even have a another center on the depth chart <laughs> that we could probably plug in. I don't even know who played behind Whipler after he went down. Right. So Zach Johnson came in to play center. Okay. After Whipler. Um, oop, give me one second. And um, so well, I guess we'll just we'll just go over here real quick. Luke Whipler got rolled up on by was it Trump Ford? I forget who it was. Somebody I did not know. Somebody rolled up onto the back of Luke Whipler's ankle, broke his ankle, uh, air cast, carted off the field. He's got to have surgery. They didn't give like a timeline for a return. We're hoping sometime during the season. It'll probably be like after the midway point, second half of the season, somewhere in there, if he comes back this year. But that sucks because Brian Allen had that. Uh, what did he have? A bicep or something? I can't even remember yeah. now. This is a couple of weeks ago in training camp out the Greenbrier. They ended up releasing him. They signed Zach Johnson. He took yep. over for Whipler yesterday. I don't even know if he's definitely like a center. I think he's just like an offensive he's lineman. Listed. Yeah. Was he he's a guard? listed as a guard, okay. but with center experience. Right. I think, yeah, he's the guy that we signed. He was the, uh, had all UFL honors last year in the UFL and stuff like yep. that. Yeah, him. Yes, exactly. Yep. Stallions, yeah. Yep, Sandy, uh, South Dakota State kid. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And he was a UDFA in the yep. NFL like three years ago or something Correct. like that. Okay. Yeah. Look at, uh, look at this. Yeah. Memory, 2001, baby. I think. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, you know, I, I think that Johnson came in and played okay. I, I mean, I didn't see anything that was like, oh, this guy is ass. But at the same time, he was going up against this, you know, third and fourth stringers for Green Bay. So we've hey. got to address that. And I'm sure Andrew Barry's already all over getting somebody in here because. You know, when Brian Allen went down, that was a bummer, but at least we still had Luke Whipler. And now mm -hmm. we don't. So we have got to get that fixed. All right. Does somebody else want to jump up here? Talk about yesterday's game? Hands up. All right. Butters. Butters, come on up, buddy. Oh, what's up, everybody? Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, sir. Holy. Perfect. First time trying on the phone, so I was curious to see if it would work okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, I guess for me, one of the big things I've kind of been back and forth on, I want to get you guys' thoughts on, is in the preseason, I understand that there's a big push to not show your hand too early, right? You want to keep everything super vanilla. What we saw from an offensive perspective yesterday, that is nowhere near, and at least it better not be anywhere near the kind of formation scheme that you're going to see from Ken Dorsey moving forward. Like that is 100% old school Kevin. We're going to run wide zone. We're going to do a lot of play action fakes, boot rollouts. Like that is old Kevin playbooks. And with us moving with the spread and probably more of an RPO game, like we didn't see any of that yesterday. So at what point do we, you know, kind of say, hey, we need to use some of this preseason live action, live bullet drills to really make sure our guys are understanding the new schemes really well and have those super clean because, you know, in practice you can get, you know, a decent amount of reps in, but it's not the same against going against live action against guys that haven't seen you play yet. I guess where do you want to, where do you draw the line of, we want to be, keep everything under wraps. We don't want to show our hands too early, but at the same time, we kind of need to get these new schemes practiced in front of a live brand new face group that we can actually see. All right. What are the things we need to tweak before we play Dallas week one? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so just, uh, let me just start here. So watching other preseason games, cause I like to watch a bunch of different, you know, players and stuff, just fan, even fantasy football related throughout the preseason. So I'm watching some of these other games a little bit. And I felt like the teams that came out and put a little bit more on tape were the ones that really had the young players, specifically the quarterbacks that they needed to get out there and they really had to get these practice reps in. So you're looking at like the Bears. I thought the Vikings, I was watching the Broncos a little bit ago with Bo Nix in there, uh, even the Falcons with Penix. Like these guys were kind of, 
running a little bit more, I think, of their actual offense because they got to get these quarterbacks who are going to be the starters integrated into that system. With the Browns, you know, we've got a, you know, a solidified starter. You know, he's a veteran, pro bowler. Like, we don't really need to worry too, too much about him adjusting to an offense and understanding the concepts of the, you know, and implementing at the NFL level. So he's not even playing. He's not going to play next week. So my guess would be we're not going to see a whole bunch of, I don't know, the the new scheme stuff until Deshaun's actually on the field to run it because what's, what's the benefit so much of putting your backups out there and showing it off, I guess is my point. And I, I know we had some starters play yesterday, but still it was primarily a lot of the second string guys. Justin, what do you think, man? I agree. I think there's a fine line between like even as far as playing time for starters, you know what I mean? There's a fine line between like what's risking an injury and then what's you're sending them out and they're, you know, not at football speed and all that. Um, I I don't, I kind of agree with you, Josh. I don't think that we're going to see anything really new offense until maybe the last preseason game. You know what I mean? And, And then that even depends on like who's out there playing and stuff like that. Um, I'm I'm not concerned as far as seeing the new plays. I'm more concerned that as far as like the last few seasons, I thought we almost rested too much heading into preseason. And then game one, I, I remember that Titans game a few years ago. Uh, there was so much hype and, you know, we really didn't play anybody. And then we went in week one and got punched in the mouth. With, that was, that was you know, also Freddie, hype, so. that was Freddie Kitchens though. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. But so, you know, that's that's my only concern. I just want to see you guys get just enough reps where we're ready week one and we're going at full speed right out of the gate. Yeah, with such a big matchup week one against Dallas, it does not surprise me that the Browns didn't want to put a whole lot out there on tape because that just gives Dallas more time to prepare for what we're going to do. And if we if we're just showing kind of the old ho-hum Kevin Stefanski stuff from years past, we're not giving them anything new. And I think yesterday at least for the offensive side of the ball and the scheme and stuff was let's get these guys out there. Let's, let's get hit by another team for the first time. Let's, let's just kind of, you know, run some plays and do that kind of thing. Of course, for, as for like for the excitement level sucked, it's totally boring, but that's preseason football. And anybody who was expecting like these big fireworks and all this stuff from, you know, the backups in week one of the preseason. Yeah. They're probably pretty disappointed, but your expectations You know, I see a lot of those people on Twitter say, oh, Kevin needs to be fired because, of you know, you didn't have these guys prepared. I think yesterday was just a lot of let's just get our feet wet. Let's get hit. You know, try not to get anybody injured. Unfortunately, we did. And we can go for some of those injuries, too. But uh, Andrew Jackson said he wanted to come up and talk. He lost his train of thought. So that's great. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wait, he must have remembered because now he's back. He wants back on the stage. Uh, all right, so sorry about that. Um, so, how much more stock do you put in this week with the joint practices that with the Vikings? Do you do with this previous week? Like, does this week mean more to you guys than the first week of uh, you know? I guess the preseason. We think it'll show more or, or show less. So, I, oh, go ahead, Justin. You take this. I just, I think going into this week, this is going to be a very chippy week. I think you're going to hear a lot of reports of, you know, both these teams are kind of chirping a little bit, maybe some scuffling. Um, I think it'll ramp up this week because it's, you're not worried about going against your team now. You know what I mean? I I think these are going to be a little bit more full speed, a little bit more intense. And you got to hope as week one approaches you know the preseason the intensity all that stuff kind of heightens up as well um so i would expect this week and this preseason game to be a little bit more and maybe some playing time for watson offensive starters so the um the joint practice week of preseason is always the one that i like the most i like to pay attention to the most but it's the camp reports and, and the the, you know, the the stuff people are seeing on the sidelines at camp and all that kind of stuff that are coming out this week that I want to hear about. Not so much in the game, because, again, I think the game on Saturday is going to they already said Deshaun's not going to play. So, I mean, it's going to be a lot of the same, okay. I think. But as, in terms of the practice, this is where these guys are actually going against each other. So, you know, when they're going team on team and our offense is going against their defense, how how is our our 
offense looking? How are our receivers doing? Is Deshaun connecting? Are we throwing touchdowns? Are we scoring? Are we moving the ball? Or is the Vikings defense pretty much stifling us and we're having trouble out there executing the plays? That's more telling to me than whatever happens on Saturday. Because again, it's another preseason game. We won't have the starters out there. Maybe maybe some. I have no idea what the plan is yet, but it won't be a full go kind of thing. But practice will be. So these joint practices, I like I like following the reports during the week. All right, let's see. Uh, Pastor Rob, you can come up here in a second. I just want to hit real quick. Kevin S. says, Zinter and Cohen both look good to me. I thought Zach Zinter and Javian Cohen, who is the uh, UDFA out of Miami. Uh, yeah, I thought those two linemen, I thought... Look pretty good. I was happy to see that. And Thrilla, Justin, would like us to talk about the secondary depth. D'Anthony Bell is already out. I saw him on the sidelines tree close. That sucks, man. And then he says Hickman got yep. injured. Looked like he pulled up with a hammy that he did. Yes. Yep. I don't think he ever yep. came back in. So, And he did get torched on that deep route by Dontavian Wick. So who else do the Browns have? Because Thrilla wasn't too impressed with Khalif Halisi, and neither was I. <laughs> that's fair that's fair i mean uh that's uh that's a scary thing i talked to somebody yesterday and they're like you know hey about the game you know it didn't look great and i was like yeah well, we had a tough day for our depth yesterday and, and i agree you know like after you have one thor held the adult bit rodney and you know it especially with the anthony bell probably being out maybe a couple of games we'll see how healthy he is heading into week one but uh it's not great. It's not great after that. No, I'm just kind of looking on PFF here and looking at some of these grades and things. So let's see. We're talking. I never even, you know, I followed the Browns so freaking close. And I try to pride myself on knowing the, the roster pretty much front and back. Who the hell is Brady Breeze? I hadn't. <laughs> so I didn't know about him until yesterday <laughs> when we were at the game. Either. This guy's out there and he's like in every single play. I'm like, who is Brady Breeze? Yeah. But, you know, I understand it's a he preseason look good game. Too. Yeah, he yeah, popped. Nice I was like, okay. So, and he's listed as strong safety and everything. So, you know, if, you know, Hickman, Bell, unfortunately, I know he's our guy, but if these guys are hurt, I mean, it looked like Brady Breeze is a guy that could end up filling a little bit of depth if he continues to play like that. Uh, Tony Brown... I, I mean, I, I didn't really notice him too, too much. looks like he just gave up one catch for, does he even say, 23 yards. Uh, Rodney McLeod, I, I, th I think that he's, his age might be catching up to him just a little bit, but I think he's still yeah. a good depth piece to have on that secondary. And then uh, Chris Edmonds, again, don't know a whole lot about him, but I, I agree, Khalif Halisi, woof. It just did, definitely did not look great. Let's see, Kevin. Yeah, Miles Harden. I thought Miles Harden definitely looked good. They kept talking about how physical, of like a a, a a cornerback he is in his tackling, and he was out there proving it. I mean, he was hitting guys, and he looked like he was supposed to be where you know, or he was where he was supposed to be a lot. Um, anybody else, Justin, that you can think of? No, no, <laughs> I, that was that was pretty solid on your part. Okay, all right, yeah, four. Poor Halisi, but I mean, it just, it definitely was not great. Yep. So, um, Pastor Rob wants to come up. So, let's get him up on stage. What's going on, brother? <laughs> Maybe. I'm trying to get him up here. Okay. Pastor Rob, you jump up here whenever you can. I'm trying to get you up here. Um, but, let's see. Kevin says, I think DTR took a step forward with his ball. He had a lot more touch yeah. on his throws, his ability to keep plays alive with his legs while also keeping his eyes downfield shows a lot of maturity. I thought he had some touch too. Yeah. You know, last year it did yeah, feel like he, he was throwing lasers most of the time, but mm -hmm. yesterday he looked really nice. I thought he looked great yesterday. If I honestly, if leaving the game and, you know, watching the second half and everything, I'm like, that's the takeaway for me is he looked great. Now, obviously he's playing third and fourth string defenses. You know, he looked he looked good last year in preseason. You know, there was people calling for him to start over Watson last year. But um, no, I thought he looked great. Um, he was the biggest takeaway for me. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Dog pack, the summer's in full swing. And you guys know what that means. Omaha Steaks annual hotter than fire sale. Go to omahasteaks.com right now. And for a limited time, you guys can get 
big savings on great packages from Omaha Steaks for just $99. Plus, you guys can get an extra $10 off that order with promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, at checkout. So these packages with that promo code are essentially $89. From exquisite steaks to legendary burgers, the premium pork, the air chilled chicken, the the meatballs, the chicken wings, the appetizers, the ready-to-eat meals, the wine, everything that Omaha Steaks has to offer, head over there today, check it out, shop the Hotter Than Fire sale to get these exclusive savings on the mouth-watering packages that start at just $99 plus. Use that code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out for an extra $10 off your order. But hurry, because this sale is only available for a limited time. Summer always flies by, and this deal is going to fly by, so you're not going to want to miss it. Go shop today, omahasteaks.com. Use promo code DOGS at checkout for an extra $10 off your order. Pastor Rob, what's going on, brother? Not a lot. How the fuck are you guys? (laughs) <laughs> you what's know, up brother i've got me a kenny mac dog pound or pound town lager today this stuff is damn good by the way happy birthday kenny mac happy birthday Devonta yes. travis you guys hope you guys are living it up i know kenny is absolutely <laughs> i've got two questions for you to the one um the this sort of half not not a question is i don't really care about the preseason at all this is like mm-hmm. this is warm-up this is yep. pretty getting ready for a season. It means less than nothing. It means zero. Injuries are the only thing that come out of this that actually mean anything. Which means we were but in the negative. I think the, question you, uh, yeah. the question for you is, from what from what you're seeing from uh, the left tackle situation, why why is Kevin not putting DeWan Jones in for left tackle? I do not want to see... Uh, what's his name? Harrison Hudson. Know, like Hud- Hudson. James Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, Hudson. Sorry. I, I think. Uh, I honestly think Dewan Jones is still getting healthy. I don't. I don't think he's a hundred percent healthy yet. I know he's back. Um, and then, honestly, I think he's it'd be too big of a risk. You know, putting him out here. If you throw him out there in a preseason game and he's playing, re- you know, Justin, he played big yesterday. Minutes, probably. What's that? DeWan Jones played yesterday. Did he? Yes, he started. Uh huh. No <laughs> kidding. I did not know that. Okay. Well, hey. <laughs> too many beers. Uh, I'm many actually beer. surprised by that. I <laughs> didn't a- think he was really, really like, I thought he was still coming back from injury. That's that's surprising. Okay. It's okay. For everybody I listening or watching this after the fact, um, when Justin goes to the games, Right. So, yes, Justin does not. He doesn't have the luxury of sitting there with the broadcast like we do at home, getting the the lineup, yeah. you know, posted on the screen and everything and then constantly reminded of, of what guys are in there. So it would have made sense because I was honestly a little shocked, too. And they said Dewan Jones at right tackle. I was like, yeah. Dewan Jones, really? I I'm, I guess he is healthy. He has been at practice. It's the other two tackles that are still out. But I mean, yeah. then again, if he didn't start, who the hell was going to start? Because it's him. And then it, you yeah, know, it's yeah. Hudson at the other side. And then you've got. Uh, who uh, Jermaine Afidi, who whatever yeah. um, Hakeem Adeniji. I thought, it's real rough. Yeah, I didn't think That's Adeniji played surprising. too bad, but that who's that? Uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Ambateka, the uh, the international uh, program guy, Roy Ambateka. Oh, the that he uh, was bad. The, was the Nigerian bad. guy. Yes. Yep. He's, yes. Hey. We love our Browns, but we just got to be real sometimes. And and that dude sucked real bad yesterday. So, and James Hudson. What? Whew, 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 whew. I think, I think that kind of says a lot too about the situation that we're heading into as far as, you know, like you're already here and like, should we trade Conklin? Should we, I, I'm kind of in the opposite direction of no keep as much as you can right now. I mean, we're, one preseason game in and we're already concerned about depth at the offensive line, you know, position as far as injuries go. Um, so it's kind of crazy, but yeah, that uh, is very surprising. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, go ahead, I Pastor. think we've seen enough of Hudson so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Every, is... Everything I've seen of Hudson doesn't, doesn't lead to, to anything good. I think he's barely, barely a backup tackle never mind like an actual starter or anything he's barely a backup no i think this is year four and that's that, 
right? Is this year four on, on Hudson on his rookie contract? I think we're done with him after this year. And to yep. me, he projects as a, if he sticks around the NFL after his rookie contract, it's going to be on practice squads, getting called up yeah. for spot starts or, or spot depth, you know, times or whatever. It's, he just, he has not developed. Yeah. And at this point, he's, I don't think he's going to. Sure. It's kind of just kind of uh, unfortunate because he kind of he moved around in positions in college and ended up coming in with very little experience at the position and it's vastly showing there. Yeah, yeah, he was a liability last year and that trend is going to continue. So, anything else that you wanted to throw in there about the the game yesterday? So my other thing is a is a bright spot um, with Miles Harden. On defense, I yep. thought he played particularly well for a, a rookie playing with other guys who were basically going to be practice squad guys. He he kind of showed out every now and again when things came to him. I I don't know. And he also he's not not scared to tackle, and he's not a big guy. He is not scared to get in there and put a tackle in, which I thought was good for for him. I thought he showed really really well that he's going to be useful this season for us for sure there was a lot of people when you know the draft ended that said oh who really cares about seventh round rookies and i was very high on miles harden after we drafted him and i researched him and i came away from all that thinking i i see him being a a decent usable player for the browns not just like a, a practice squad candidate or anything like that and you talk about depth in the secondary well we need it and I think he can provide that. And then you think about special teams, a guy that can tackle like that, he, he's making yes. the roster, in my opinion. Well, and we've talked, Pastor Rob, you talked about, you know, preseason and stuff like that. A big thing for me with like these preseason games is getting to see some of these kind of guys. You know what I mean? So every year there's a couple of guys like a D. Anthony Bell that kind of pops off the film. And you're like, you know, hey, this guy, he's going to end up making, you know, the roster or something like that. So, for for a guy like that, a six round pick, or even you know a UDFA like Aiden Robbins yesterday getting playing time, that seeing some of those guys, um, that's that that's what I take away from like the preseason games is how are those guys developing? How are they even looking? Yeah. The other one that I seen uh, yesterday was uh, Diabate. I thought he really played well yep. for a UDFA in his second year. Oh, yes, yeah. He did, and I think we, that, I, I don't know. I have not heard anything about Buki Watson. Was another guy that got injured yesterday, left with a quad injury. He, which... he had, to, had to get an MRI, I believe. Great, cool, awesome. He's it's another. Been... He's one of the one of the chain of like well, we got like 10, 10 players all needing MRIs or some of that. Or CT scans, it was like crazy. Yeah, it's like get in line, guys. But, uh, it, you know, we were so excited about Buki. We talked to him on the show here. Yeah, I mean, just led the SEC in tackles and sacks. I think they said he was the first player ever to do that in, in history. So very impressive young player and just a bummer to see him get hurt in the first freaking preseason game because I was expecting big things out of him this year. So yeah. that, you know, special teams, but then also just providing depth and rotation at that linebacker spot. We've got Jordan Hicks is already banged up. Uh, Tony Fields is already banged up. JOK's missed a couple of days. I don't think anything serious, but you know, we 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 need our freaking players. This sucks. Yeah, Devin Bush has the injury history. Devin Bush looked good yesterday too. Yeah, I did. I thought so. That's, yeah. what, that's what I was literally about to say. Devin Bush was a surprise, wasn't he? He was. He actually looked like a player. Yeah, <laughs> and we know that he. I mean, he, he has been very straight before. Before his injury, he was awesome and. um you know, I think he was one of Blake's like under the radar, sneaky watch for this guy this year kind of players. And another guy, I'm just going through the list here. Devin Bush looked good, and another guy who popped for me. And I know again, guy, I get it, third and fourth string, understood. But Winston Reed, that UDFA out of Weber State, I thought he looked pretty good too. Linebacker. Mm. Mm. But I don't remember it much to be honest, but. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, he played later in the game. I think he came in uh, after Bush, but uh, yeah. I, I only like had like a quarter of an eye on the game, kind of <laughs> towards the end. It was very much like, um, okay, I'm kind of done with this. Yeah, if yeah. Uh, if if we're mentioning just 
guys that, you know, I thought were impressive. I receiver wise, Michael Woods, the couple catches that he had, I, I, I thought he looked good. And uh, Thrash, even Thrash, I thought, well, had a couple moments. He had two catches, I believe, also. Three for 43. Okay, yeah. Three for 43. Jamari. And, th- and Wood, Wood, Go ahead. Woods put himself in a good position for getting on the on the roster, especially with Bell going down as well in the game. Yes, Bell had a big catch early like, in the game, and it was like, oh, cool, hey, there's David Bell, and then... He was injured and and out oh, and it's God. like son of a bitch, <laughs> and then you know I was waiting. I wanted to see Jamari Thrash because I've heard a lot of good things from camp. Just you know he's running good routes. Yeah. He's got good hands. He's where he's supposed to be. And then he came out yesterday and he just did all that on the field in an actual game. So I think Jamari Thrash could be a very valuable player this year. You know we. We've been talking about the wide receivers, obviously, a lot with the IU stuff going on the past week or so. And, you know, Amari Cooper's 30 years old. Obviously, he still plays at a high level. But if he gets injured, Jerry Judy's already missed a ton of camp because of his injury. And um, now you got Bell, who's out. And I think a guy like Jamari Thrash could end up getting more work than what maybe was originally planned. But Justin, I'm with you. I thought Michael Woods looked good, too. And it was very nice to see Amari and Brown he made a couple. He's got listed uh, two receptions for twenty six, but he had three receptions for more than that and a touchdown. It just got called back on a penalty. Yeah, I uh, I felt bad for him because it started off kind of pretty low for him. Yes, and then uh, I felt like he redeemed himself very well towards the end of the game. I for sure. We uh, actually he had, he had some. He had some props that should have really been catches as well. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah he, he struggled a little bit, but he did he did redeem himself. It was good to see. I mean, we actually messaged Amarian Brown and Aiden Robbins both after the game, you know, and just told them good good job, congratulations. Just so yeah. fun to watch these guys that are the UDFAs that we got to interview on the show, and you know they both said thanks and everything, and just excited to see them continue to get opportunities. Um, the way the running back packing order went kind of made me reassess my evaluation a little bit on where Aiden Robbins might be standing in the order just because when Nick Chubb comes back, it's, it's Nick Chubb at the top of the the timeshare, which I think it'll still be a pretty heavy timeshare when he comes looks- back. And then you've got Foreman who's still coming back from that neck injury, but I think he was practicing okay. this week back at practice, so he should yeah. be okay. And then obviously Jerome Ford is going to be the lead guy to start. And then... We saw a lot of Pierre Strong yesterday. What did you guys think about Pierre Strong? Because I was kind of like, he made, I think he had one run where I thought, hey, that was a nice little bounce out where he made a nice cut yeah. and, and got some yards. But overall, just kind of bleh, in my opinion. Yeah. So I, um, I think it did. I, go ahead, Pastor Rob. Sorry, buddy. I think if anything, Strong, Strong's got a better chance of getting special teams. I think he, him and uh, Prochet are the mm-hmm. odds on favorites for return man. Oh yeah. I think Prochet's well, got that locked up. Yeah. I think, I think a better a better thing for Strong to get it, mostly based around the fact that the way these kickoffs are happening, it's very congested. It's more a running back mm-hmm. position than a wide receiver position. These because it gets very congested really quickly and they're taking some Kind of, kind of hard hits on these returns. They are so yeah. running backs in better, better positioned to take these hits and I, retain the ball. Um, I think that's where his position would be. Apart from that, the the running back room yesterday was anemic. It was really bad. I yeah. agree, buddy. It, I agree. I thought I thought it was disappointing, but also I I'm keeping in mind too that we're talking about second and third string line depth. And we're talking about very, very bland run schemes, like nothing exotic. Not, it's basically just a draw. <laughs> Everybody, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's disappointing. I, I, I get it. Trust me. I, and I came away from it going, Jesus, you know, I don't even know if we got two yards a carry or three yards a carry as far as over the game. 2.7. Um, we- well, how big was it? What was it? Yards? Two, game or something? 2.7 2. yards a carry. Yard? 56. Okay, but at, I'm trying. I'd like to just keep re- remind myself too that this is very just 
simple schemes. You know, that that's what that would be my takeaway. But you're right; it it didn't look great. It did not. Um, Running back one, two, and three are out. One, two, and three are all out at the moment for us. So Nick Chubb, Freeman, and uh, what's his name from the Bills? Oh, no, 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 no. no. Nine, Nine, Nine Hines is not running back three. Uh, Jerome, Ford, Jerome Ford's running back two. Oh. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Ch- Chubb's out, and then, then you got Ford, and Foreman, I think, are going to split. And Naeem Hines... We'll see. I, I'm not holding out hope. Yeah, the a, dude has not done a football drill in over a year from that ACL. I don't know if he's gonna. I don't know if he's a, he's gonna make this team. Yeah, he's still injured now, which is yeah. not a good look. No, no, it's not. Let's uh, let's get Andrew Jackson back up here. He's had his hand up for a minute. Hopefully, he didn't lose his train of thought this time. <laughs> No, 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 I, I didn't. But <laughs> anyway, uh, first off, I got to say this. Uh, Jamari Thrash equals Jamari Trash. I watched him a year at Louisville. He sucks wiener. <laughs> so, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, congratulations. You played decently with fourth string guys. I mean, I mean, what more do you want from me? I mean, I'm not going to give you any kind of kudos outside of that. But oh, come that's on. not this why. Is, this isn't like a Kentucky nope. thing, is it? Yeah, 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 it is. It is a church. It's one thousand percent hatred towards that guy. But uh It's okay. We feel the same anywho. way about Michigan guys. But you know what? I'll still give Zinter his, his due. Yeah, I mean I was gonna say, I mean, like, I mean, if he played for Michigan, I mean, would you guys give him the same amount of uh props or anything like that? But Absolutely. No, I mean, no, give him the same I mean, amount of shit that you just did. Not <laughs> <laughs> but but anywho. Um so honestly. What are your guys' true, honest thoughts about the game? Like, I mean, like, take any bias, <laughs> anything that you thought about players, take anything of that out of the equation. Like, if if you hook, got hooked up to truth serum and a lie detector test, what are your true thoughts about this game? You want me to go first? <laughs> yeah, go for it, buddy. <laughs> I, will, I will say this. I go into the game, you could tell it was a preseason game. You know what I mean? They still had the SummerSlam banners up. The stadium was not ready. I felt like, you know what I mean? But if I, you know, true serum is in me, this is my big take. I would go, I thought DTR looked good. I thought DTA, DTR looked good against, like like we said, third and fourth string guys. I thought that he's, he still looked solid. And uh, it's exciting as far as like, you know, a development project. If that's the one takeaway that I have to go away from it, say, hey, the stadium didn't look great. DTR did. <laughs> that's that's my takeaway. So if I've got the true serum in me and you want just my my baseline Browns fan reaction to the game, not not a common sense level headed kind of reaction which i feel like i've been trying to do so far the game was boring as shit man it was so fucking boring and <laughs> it was just like oh my gosh like the the offense and i get it we, I, I understand why it had to be that way but at the same time it's like oh i don't even want to watch this right now and then every time they'd run the ball with emmanuel wilson i mean it's like we co- converge on him like three guys and then he's still getting six or seven yards uh you know a carry and it's like we kind of suck right now on defense and You know, I kind of said that at the beginning, I think I did anyway, of the show that it just felt like some of the fundamentals with these backups, and I understand they're backups and a lot of these guys aren't even going to make the roster, maybe they're practice squad guys, but the basic fundamentals, sketchy. And it just, it's preseason game one. Okay, I'll give it a pass. If I'm seeing sloppy tackling and piss poor mechanics and things like that in week two and in preseason week three, I'm going to be a little concerned about what we're doing at practice because... You know, I don't understand these guys aren't getting all the reps. These guys are standing on the sidelines when we're doing team drills and all that kind of stuff. But when you're doing your individual drills, you're getting coached up. I mean, or at least you should be. And even if you're not on the field participating in a drill, you should be watching, listening, learning, mental reps. So I guess there you go. There's my true serum kind of take. But Let's see. Does that, who wants to come up here next? Mama Tendo, I see you're typing. Why don't, why don't you jump up here and talk for a second if you want to? I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but. 
<laughs> <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Fantasy football's coming up. <laughs> All right, we got no hands up at the moment, so... Oh, wait, Butters. We got a hand. Butters is Butters, back. Butters is in. Butters is muted. Oh, sorry, guys. Butters is unmuted. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say one of the guys I was really hoping to see a little bit more from because I think the writing's on the wall, but I just, I hate being that guy that's like, I didn't like the pick from day one, but I came into it, you know, hoping maybe it, he could change my mind. But Siaki is really struggling, man. I mean, here's the thing. If you're going to be a true zero tech, you're going to be that big 350 pound beefcake in the middle. You, you got to hold the line of scrimmage. You cannot get blown off the ball. I mean, I can understand that he might not be the greatest pass rusher, whatever. I can, I can live with it. Just don't get blown off the ball. And when, what was it, the, the final rushing touchdown Green Bay had, they climbed two, two off the line and took him right out of the play. It was easy in the end zone. Like, yeah. it, at some point, he's got to, it, it's a third round pick. You know he's going to keep being around. They're going to keep giving him opportunities. But at what point do you kind of cut bait and say, I don't want to go Anthony Schwartz on it yet, but like, my goodness, I was hoping for at least a little bit more pop coming into this uh, this new season. I, I I think you're go ahead, Josh. No, ahead. You, no, you take this one. I got. I'll, I'll go after you. I I think I think there is legit concern. You could warrant concern because we're we're going into year two now, and from what I've read, he had some. He's dealing with some like body weight issues, trying because he has lost some weight, so he's trying to get used to the body weight, I guess, the new body weight. But from what I read, he he was taken, you know, basically knocked down twice, you know, um, onto his ass. But it's it's tough because there's other guys, at, especially at that position. That position is interesting because you guys like Shelby Harris, and Maurice Hurst, like those guys, they're in a competition for that roster spot with uh, Ika. So I know it's a third round pick and you have to think that, you know, Andrew Barry has shown that he keeps his picks around. But I think that there's, you could say there's an interesting conversation that maybe Maurice Hurst or Shelby Harris should have that roster spot over him, even though he is a third round pick and he's still developing. I mean, I I completely, I think you have a good point in saying at what point do you cut base? Because it's, I think they're close to that. Yeah, and with uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, you know, status for week one up in the air right now, coming back from his knee scope or whatever. So don't know about him, if he's going to be available right away. And even if he is, he's coming off of no training camp. So he's going to have to get more eased into action. And then I think Shelby Harris was the one that missed practice, some practice this past week with undisclosed injury last I saw. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, Man, just sucks for Ika. And we've seen that. Andrew Barry likes to hold on to his picks and ride them out a little bit longer than maybe we're, we're happy with sometimes. But if there's one position that he moves on from a little sooner than the others, it's that defensive tackle spot. And then he just grabs another one and tries to keep going. I mean, uh, what was the kid from um, Ohio State? Uh, Tommy Togiai. He didn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, he they cut bait with him after two seasons. They gave him a couple shots and said, nope, you're not developing. Perry on Winfrey started screwing around they, after one year. And they said, nope done get out so this is that one position where we do have depth as long as you know the the health isn't too in question but yeah he's he's got a lot of work ahead of him and just he's starting out so far behind the eight ball now that i don't know if he can make up that ground this episode is brought to you by bought in sports Browns fans, Bodden Sports is your one-stop shop for all your athletic gear. Bodden started out perfecting and manufacturing the best balls in the business. Yeah, if that sounded dirty, that's more about your mind than my words. But hey, it's true. Baseball, softballs, footballs, basketballs, volleyballs, soccer balls, you name it. And Bodden has engineered the highest standard sports balls available. 
And now they offer more than just sports balls. If you got kids playing baseball or softball, Bodden has batting gloves and bats to go along with both game balls and training balls. If you're into basketball, Bodden makes basketball specifically for indoor or outdoor use. Heck, Bodden even has all the equipment you need for pickleball, which is one sport that I hear everyone is playing and yet I still never have. And I need to fix that soon. But don't miss the backyard game section of Bodden's website where you can order everything you need for this upcoming outdoor season. Pool balls, backyard volleyball, nets, croquet, bocce, horseshoes, cornhole, and more. Right now, you can get 10% off your entire order at Baden Sports, B-A-D-E-N sports.com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S, and use promo code dogs when you check out. That's 10% off all the top quality sporting gear you need this season. Baden sports.com slash dogs. I... Uh- not not really. I guess the only thing I would say is and I know we probably didn't go super deep into Mike Hall. I think he gave you a little bit of some excitement. I, I feel bad. I feel like he almost had a really good sack, but Isaiah Thomas really he actually really showed up, which was nice because yeah. it was kind of like a, like that forgotten man that you forgot he was a seventh round pick like a couple of years ago. And he's like popping out a little bit. He's showing him his stuff. But, um, you know, I thought Mike looked explosive. He did a pretty solid job um, maintaining the line of scrimmage because that's, I think we all kind of agree that when he was coming out of Ohio State, it was no question about if he can get to a quarterback. The explosion's there. He is a pass rush savant in that scenario. The trick with him is when it comes to the run game, can he maintain the line of scrimmage or does he get blown off the ball kind of like we saw a little bit with Perry on um, two years ago? Because if he can be out there on the early downs... I mean, he's a guy you could really see getting the 60%, 70% kind of snaps, but it might take a little bit. We'll we'll see, but I thought it was a, a solid outing for, for the rookie. Yeah, for sure, and you got to remember, too, whenever he was out there, he didn't even get to go out there with the guys we started yesterday who weren't the starters. They were like the second-string defensive line, so he was out there with you know some maybe some of the second-string guys at times, but mostly the third string. I think it's a different story. When you get somebody with his special, you know, his specialties, his skill set, get him on the line with Miles Garrett, Sedarius Smith, Dalvin Tomlinson, Oboe, you know, and and then let him cook. So I, I he was encouraging. It, 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 the biggest thing for this, these rookies, especially like a guy like Mike Hall, get out there, get reps, get get processing speed down for the game, all that kind of stuff. So I thought that was really good. I agree. Yep, I agree. All right, so let's see. We've got. About 15 minutes left here. We got a couple hands up. So we'll see. We'll get Pastor Rob up here first. Then Andrew Jackson. If anybody else wants to talk, get your hand up and we will make sure we get to you before we close out the show. Uh, Pastor Rob? Come on up. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Hello. Hello. I was actually wanting to continue Butter's conversation that he was having about uh, Ika. Uh, that's why I was wanting to jump up. So I don't know if Butter's wants to stay up as well. Um, do you not think Ika, like, as as a pick, it was an odd pick from from everything that the way that uh, that we play the defense that he wants to play the defense. Ika is a strange pick because he never normally plays a nose tackle. He never normally plays a zero tech in his system in Jim Schwartz. So it seemed a very strange pick at the time. It's like they identified him pre-Jim coming in and went, yeah, we're going to take him anyway. It was it's a very, very, very strange pick. Everything that Ika does, he might, like last year he was, what, 300 plus, and now he's like two, late, two, late 200s. But... Mm-hmm. I think just I think Justin could be on the line and hold a man up longer than he could. He, I don't know, man. Falls, he falls over. He falls over. He he doesn't. It's almost like he's not putting the effort in. It's really, really disappointing from him. I I I'm I'm yet to see him be anything but just like a body, like taking up a number on the on the on the depth chart. That's that's the only thing I've seen from him. And I've not seen anything from what he was like uh, at Baylor. I think he was Baylor, wasn't he? Yeah. 
I've not seen anything like what what he what his <laughs> was at all. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? And Butters, if he's up, again. yeah, Butters came back up. Do you want to chime in on that? Yeah. So one of, one of the things I I'm a huge like fan of is I love um, like draft prep. Love researching guys. Hell, I've already started researching for 2025 already. <laughs> like that's kind of one of the things I love doing. Love watching film. So like when I look at D tackles, you're 100 percent uh, on point, Pastor Rob. It's with the way Jim Schwartz is, works his D-line, they're aggressive. They want to get in the backfield. You're looking for three decks. You're looking for guys that are a little bit lighter, that like 290, maybe 300, maybe a little more, but they got to be explosive. They got to be quick. They have to be pass rush centric. A guy like Mike Hall makes a ton of sense. A guy even like, like a Byron Murphy this last year went to Seattle. That's the kind of mold I expect that like a Jim Schwartz would covet. When they picked Siaki Ika, it blew me away because that just doesn't match what Jim Schwartz does. Like, Siaki Ika is perfect for a 3-4, and he's playing a nose tackle. He's playing an old-school style ball. Um, it's They kept saying, you know, he's going to be this you know Ferrari in the garage, and he's going to lock it. And he's quick for a guy that was – he came out 350. I mean, when you're a 350-pound man, that is – that is heft. There is no, <laughs> I mean, you can be quick for 350, but you're not quick. And the other biggest thing with him, because some people pointed to Vita Vea. They said, hey, he could be like Vita Vea. And I say, the issue with that is and Vita Vea is a great D tackle because he's kind of almost like a Dexter Lawrence in that same mold where they're big boys, but they have length. Siaki Ika's got about 30, 31 inch arms max. And this is my big red flag with him that you can't teach longer arms. You can't get around that lack of length to make up for the fact that you might not be the quickest. So he doesn't hold gaps super well. It gets blown off a lot easier. Like these were things that it, it just it kept making me scratch my head because it just doesn't fit the mold. So when they picked him, I just never and like it like blew my mind. I just never expected it. Um, so. I don't it's basically the same issues Tommy Togi I had except Ika is about 50 pounds more yeah Togi is just a lot smaller like in Togi I came out at 290 he was the guy that put up 40 on the bench and everyone's like well that's like an Aaron Donald right because he's a lighter guy but his strength at the point of attack could be so good when you have 30 inch arms it's so difficult because it's hard to win the leverage battle. It's hard to get your hands on the inside and control the man in front of you. So it's just one of those things that I was afraid that Siaki, because of physical limitations, would never be able to live up to a third round pick. It would, at best scenario, like his best case to stay on the roster is to be a big body, third and short goal line rotational piece that after the rookie deal was done, they don't resign because it's not really worth, you know, paying him any starter level money. He's just a body for a body's sake. Yeah, it, it's unfortunate because going into year two, and I know sometimes with these guys you got to and 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 defensive tackles, obviously one of those positions it does take a little more adjustment from college to pro and all that kind of stuff. We talk about that all the time, but we've seen literally nothing from him, and that's the most discouraging thing. I mean, he was. Obviously buried on the depth chart last year, dealt with some injuries. But even when we did get glimmers, glimpses of him in the preseason and stuff last year, and I think then again in what week eighteen, I think he played a little bit against the Bengals there, and it was just like this guy is, doesn't do anything. Like he's just there's no, I'm not impressed. And it's just now carried over into year two. And with everything you just laid out, I thought you laid that out perfectly well. So very well said. Um, yeah, I am concerned about, you know, his status on the team. Justin? Well, I agree. I I just think it's unfortunate because in different circumstances, if and it all comes down to roster depth, we're, we're just very, very loaded pretty much at every position. There's not room anymore to wait around on development, unfortunately. You know, we're, we're not in a rebuild. We don't have time for guys to develop. We're we're pretty much in a win now window, I would say the next two years. So, you know, maybe if this is 
2001, this guy is able to sit on the roster, um, you know, a couple of years and develop and get ready, you know, to maybe to become a depth piece even. So um, it's becoming a situation where I, if they said, hey, he did get cut, it wouldn't shock me at all. Other than the history with Andrew Berry's, he protects his draft picks. But as far as like development impact right now, we, we haven't seen anything. And, you know, it, are you going to cut a guy that maybe becomes a depth piece or even, you know, a fill in starter in some situations next to Dalvin? I don't know if you can warrant that. No, I, I think that, and, and obviously they must have had some concerns with Ika going into the season because we, we padded that defensive tackle position so much. And we've talked about it a bunch this offseason, how we just don't have room on the roster for all the guys at that position. There's going to be at least one guy who's not going to make this roster. And you're right, Justin, I cannot, I can't think of anybody that I would cut or, or move on from for sake of Siaki. I mean, I'm not getting rid of, obviously Mike Hall's locked in, Dalvin Tomlinson, Shelby Harris signed two year deal. I think he's locked in. I'm not moving off Mo, Mo Hurst for him. Are you kidding me? Mo Hurst no. is awesome. We signed oh, Quentin Jefferson. No. I'm not moving off. Of, I think Quentin Jefferson's that depth rotational supportive piece, Justin, yeah. like you were talking about, that could come in and fill in some meaningful minutes if we needed him to. So, and yeah, go ahead. With the special team stuff too, you're going to want to, you're going to need more as far as depending on what side of the ball it is, you're going to want more skilled tacklers, gunners. You're On the other side of the ball, you're going to need extra depth like running back. I could see us taking an extra running back, like a fourth running back now, because you have to have two guys back. And so I think we're going to have to basically sacrifice one wide receiver spot already for uh, Prochet. And depending on who the second guy is, the returner, whether it's Hines or if it's um, uh, Pierre Strong or whoever, you're going to pretty much have to carry a fourth running back for that, you know, or to you know cover that second return spot so i could see those guys or even like let's say uh, michael woods if he continues to excel in preseason are you keeping michael woods over an Ika? right now i would say let me let me take a shot at michael woods considering we're on the last year of mari's deal we might we're gonna need some wide receiver depth over the next couple of years Ika doesn't help you on the special teams either because he's a now mobile guy He's not yeah. going to be the guy who's going to run to the tobacco. He's too big. The amount of energy he'd waste doing that would wipe him out for what? How many how many plays in a row? He, right. Where you're, yeah, you're going to not even be ready for defense. You're going to basically have to sit out a few plays. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that what what do you think the chances are on a trade where we trade them away for like either late round picks or <laughs> something like maybe a center? The only, I don't, I, and I'm not being crappy when I say this. I don't know if he has value enough to to get to warrant a trade right now. And I, and maybe I'm way off here, but for me, even though he was a third round pick, I don't know if he's put anything on film that's worth a team coming out and going. Well, we'll give you a seventh for him two years down the road, two years older. You know, I, I think he only has value in the fact that he's one young and he's exactly on his rookie contract. That's very fair. That's very yeah. fair. That that's, the, that's the only value he's got. He's not nothing from play. I agree with you. He's hundred percent Justin. He's not proven anything. Yeah, I yeah. think I think if he's not on the team, it's by probably by cut. Or I mean, maybe they move him to practice squad because kind of the same thing with the value. Who the hell's coming to get him? I mean, he hasn't done anything. So yeah, that one's <laughs> disappointing. But we've got a couple minutes left here. Andrew Jackson's had his hand up forever. It must be so tired. But we'll get we'll get him back up here on stage, see what he has to say. Yeah, so so very tired. Um, <laughs> but the, the, honestly, to play off what uh, Pastor Rob and Butters have said, so just hypothetically, 8 a.m. tomorrow, you got to make a cut after this game. Who are you cutting after this game? And, I mean, leave bias, leave feelings, leave all that nonsense behind. Who are you cutting? Who would be that? I guess that. Um, I don't know. Other than that, that the 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 pull on your heartstring kind of guy. I guess who would you cut tomorrow at eight a.m. if you had to, at, just after watching 
this game. And that's all I got. So basically they say, here's the entire roster. You got to cut one person from this game before the next game. So Justin, does anybody pop off in your mind? Um, not, uh, not a hundred. I obviously like if we, if we look at the play from yesterday, uh-huh. I, and the, you know, disappointing performances, I would say Hudson and Ika would be my two where I was just like, you know, and I, and it's not, and it sucks too. Cause it's not really fair. It's, you know, it's preseason, you know, guys are still, but those were the two that I felt like, you know, it was, it was obvious that, you know, they were getting beaten out there. What I, and the scary thing is though, like, I, and we have to cut somebody. I don't know if I'm even cutting either of those two. I'm sure there's guys way farther down on the depth chart that I'd rather move off of. I'm not getting rid of Hudson right now, especially since Wimpler just went down. I'm not, there's going to be some movement on that offensive line this week and we're going to be bringing some guys in and, you know, so, I, if I had to, I would look farther down. I don't have a name right off the top of my head. Let me think about it, but it would be farther down the depth chart. Yeah. I mean, the Hudson thing with me, I know he's like an obvious choice that people are probably screaming. I know in the chat, Hudson, 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 but again, he's a, he's a tackle that has starting experience in the NFL. It's not been great, yeah. but we also don't, if we, if we cut him, then who's the, who's the depth tackle that we fill in this place. And Bateka, I mean, yeah, right. At this point, he is the probably the best of the worst because the other guys aren't making the roster. So it wouldn't be him for me. Honestly, it might be a guy like Khalif Halisi. I just I thought after yesterday's showing, I'm like, okay, I, I'm kind of done with him. Like he he didn't look great um, at all. And I think that we have like our cornerback depth. I, I definitely would not keep him over like Miles Harden. And we've got Justin Hardy as well. And I know he's like a big special team guy. So there's just, I don't see a whole lot of room for Khalif Halisi given the other guys that are in the mix for that cornerback position. And it's still so early too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I, that's, I think the biggest thing to take away from yesterday is just don't panic. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? We're this, uh, that was the only like going home yesterday. If that's a regular season game, I'm devastated. I'm like, <laughs> right. oh man. We, we we got suck. dominated. We we did not really look good at any point of the ball. You know what I mean? But for me, I'm like, it's the first preseason game. We're talking about guys that, you know, most of the guys that were playing, some of them are going to make the team, but a lot of them probably aren't. You know, a lot of them end up practice squad guys or even, you know, UFL guys next year or whatever. So I, I think that's the biggest thing. Let's, you know, take a deep breath. We saw the depth. It didn't, you know inspire a lot of confidence but also it's early yeah i agree 100 percent, and i think that's a great way to wrap it up it was a ho-hum whatever preseason game yesterday but we did get browns football back on the field like justin said i mean the field wasn't even painted i mean we hadn't no it was it was bland summer slam they still had the banners from summer slam up it looked like (laughs) it looked like everybody just showed up on saturday and they're like oh we're hey we're doing a game here today yeah let's just get this game over with (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah so you know moving into this week pay attention to the reports coming out from training camp practices while we have these joint sessions with the vikings because that will be more telling than anything we see in the game on saturday uh this week i think is going to be a lot more important to pay attention to but again it is still preseason just the biggest thing for me pray for no more injuries because you know losing whipler yesterday was more than what we needed to have happen we can't be losing more people because it's a long season. We know how that went last year. I, but uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Everybody in the chat jumping in for this Dog Pack Discord. You guys rock. We love you guys. Can't we? Yeah, they're talking about Cleveland in November, the get together. Can't wait for that. If you guys listening, watching are interested, if you want to join the Dog Pack, head to jointhedogs.com, become an official Dog Pack member in the Patreon, get access to the private Discord, jump in, do these Dog Pack Discord shows like these guys do. It's a great way to get in there, get to know everybody. Awesome group of people. We have a ton of fun. Just it, the Discord is a 24 7 conversation. I say it all the time. There's always somebody in there talking. People are in there chatting about something. And it's just, it's awesome. It's a ton of fun. And we are doing that get together in November. Plus, fantasy football signups are still going on until August 23rd. Do not miss out. If you want to get in, 
get in now. You can do the free trial for the first seven days and then continue on with your membership after that. But just let us know that you're interested in fantasy and we'll get you guys put into a league. We're going to have a ton of fun this year. So anything else you want to hit, Justin, before we wrap it up for good? Nope, I'm all good, man. All right, buddy. All right, well, again, appreciate everybody tuning in. We will talk to you guys later this week when we talk about what's going on during camp for the week, previewing a little bit of that Vikings game, just talking about Browns football in general. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Danger Coffee. Browns fans, we talk about how Danger Coffee is made free from mold toxins that are in 45% of the world's coffee, but that's not all that Danger Coffee has to offer. Mineral and nutrient deficiencies are a big deal. They make you feel sick, tired, stressed, and they can give you brain fog. These deficiencies negatively affect your immune system, your digestion, sleep, metabolism. Have you ever wondered why you get an initial burst from your coffee? But then you get that little crash not long after danger coffee's patent pending process remineralizes your body with more than 50 trace minerals and electrolytes, leaving you more energized, engaged, powerful. These micronutrients enter the cells to boost performance. They bind to toxins to provide detoxification support. I know that sounds like a lot, but the bottom line, guys, is minerals matter. And most of us really don't get enough of them on a daily basis. Danger Coffee delivers micronutrients, plus it gives you access to the minerals you already have. Head to DangerCoffee.com. Use our code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for 10% off your order. And that code can be used over and over. So you get 10% off every order you make using code DOGS. It's time to start every day off with a cup of coffee that gets you going and actually keeps you going. DangerCoffee.com. Code dogs.